Today on the channel, we have a product that we have never looked at before. This is a digital photo frame. What's up everybody and welcome to the Phase Reviews YouTube channel. My name is Jordan and if you are new here, thank you for joining us and if you are a subscriber, welcome back. This is the VUCA Play V7 7 inch digital photo frame. This is a really awesome digital photo frame that can receive pictures from your phone via the internet. No memory cards, no having to transfer things with a USB uh, stick or anything like that. You can just update your pictures on your picture frame wirelessly from your phone in a matter of seconds and it looks good and it's affordable unlike some of the other Wi-Fi photo frames out there. So today we're going to do a full rundown of everything that comes in the box. I'm going to tell you about the setup process with this guy, show you what it looks like and let you know whether or not I think it's worth picking one up for yourself. Now, if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you become one hopefully by the end of this video, but we won't waste any more time with that. Let's start talking about this VUCA Play V7. All right, so this is a company that I have never heard of. They reached out to me and asked me to review this product, but uh, everything I share today is going to be my own opinion. Uh, and I'm going to give you the good and the bad about this guy. The box, um, I always start with the packaging on this channel and um, nothing flashy here as you can see, pretty plain. It's got their logo up there in the top and uh, a couple random symbols on the back that you kind of see on every product. Other than that, uh, nothing really flashy. So hopefully they put the money that they would have spent on flashy packaging into the product itself because honestly, that's where it matters. So we'll open this up. We won't waste any more time with the box. And the first thing on the top of the packaging when you open it up is going to be the frame itself. It's in a protective plastic case. We're going to come back to this in a second. Underneath that, you have a few different pieces of literature, some paper here. Uh, you've got service card where you can reach out if you have problems with your frame. You also have free gift, right? I think the I'll send you some accessory, uh, a frame for the, uh, a wood frame for the digital frame if you will leave a review on Amazon. And uh, then you've got what I would very, very vaguely, very roughly consider a manual. In all honesty, it's really just kind of a feature overview that shows you what the different functions of the remote control and of the frame do. It really doesn't tell you much in the way of setting this up. But don't despair if you are um, maybe a little technologically illiterate, the frame will walk you through the entire setup process when you turn it on. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Also in the box, you're going to have your uh, power cable. This is not battery operated, so you need to have it plugged in. Um, this is just a standard you know, DC adapter, a, uh, AC to DC. Uh, let's see, it does 50 or 60 Hertz, so it doesn't matter where you're at, um, you know, UK or US. 0.5 amps and five volt output put um, 2,000 milliamps. Okay, so you've got this included. Uh, it's decently long, shouldn't have any problem going from your wallet to like a side table or up to, you know, some location where you're going to, the, to display this. It also comes with this. This is the little kickstand for the frame and this is pretty unique. We're going to talk about this more in just a second. And then they also include a little remote that comes with a battery. I imagine some sort of button cell. Uh, it had a piece of plastic in there to make sure that the battery was charged when it got here, which is really nice. This has a few different functions on it, which we will look at in just a moment. Now, let's look at the frame itself. Pulling it out of the bag, uh, this is a seven inch model. I believe they do make larger sizes. On the front, you've just got their logo kind of small, and then you've got these two openings right here, which are the IR sensors for the remote. Now, on the back, you've got a really nice textured back. Um, all of the finishing is good. There's no rough edges. There is a little speaker vent. I don't know if you can see that right there. This will give you like confirmation when you use the remote, like when you click up or down, so you can hear uh, as you make changes. I believe this will also uh, play video files through the app, so that will play the audio of the video files. And then this little port right here is where you're going to plug in the charger and the kickstand, because this actually serves both functions. The kickstand not only holds up the frame, but also serves as the power port. So you just push that in and twist, and now that's locked in, and then you just plug the end of your charger into the end of the kickstand. I've never seen that design before. What this means is that you're not hanging this on the wall and indeed they didn't include any mounting holes right here. So this is purely a tabletop unit. 
Um, I think that's how most people use theirs anyway, but just keep that in mind. Uh, things I really like about this, I love the, the back of this frame. It doesn't look bad even if you're looking at it from behind, you know, if it's kind of out in the middle of your room. The border around the edge is not too large. It doesn't, you know, overwhelm the screen size, which is always nice to see. The logo is pretty unintrusive. And, you know, all in all, it feels really nice. So let's power it up and I will show you how this works. All right, so I've just plugged in the frame. It takes a good bit of time to get started, probably between 20 and 30 seconds for the frame to power up. Now you can see we've got the lo uh, logo right here. It's gonna take a while to connect to my internet. Now I've powered this up before, obviously to test it and make sure it works. And so what we're seeing now uh, is going to be a little bit different from the first time you power it up. And this is uh, asking if I want a new firmware version, I'll click upgrade so I can kind of talk to you guys while this downloads. It is nice that because it's connected to the internet, it will stay updated as the manufacturer create, you know, gets bug fixes and things like that. That is one benefit over a standalone frame that does not have wireless connectivity and honestly there's not a lot of frames that have the wireless Wi-Fi photo upload and those that do are usually you know well over a hundred bucks so it's nice to see that functionality in a frame uh, at this price point now when you boot this up for the first time you are going to see a screen that says welcome to setup mode and the setup mode all the instructions are on the screen not in a manual and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to connect to your home Wi-Fi it does not do 5g so just your standard uh, home Wi-Fi connection. You'll put in your password. You have to use the D-pad to click through all the letters. It's time intensive, so don't expect to set this up in like a couple of seconds. You are gonna have to like click through all of your passwords. Then you're gonna have to go through and select a language. You're gonna have to name the frame and you're gonna have to put a location for the frame. You can't skip any of those steps. So again, not the quickest process, but no big deal there. Now you can see the firmware updated and it's cycling through a few pictures of some poker chips that I have. Um, the display quality, I mean, while we're looking at these pictures, the display quality is fantastic. I'm zoom in a little bit here. I don't know, you know, if that's gonna come through on a, on a camera, right? Filming another screen. But the, uh, the quality is amazing, especially, you know, if you're standing, you know, a couple feet away. But even once you get up close and look at the screen, there's not much pixelation. It looks really good. I would consider this, you know, an HD display. Now back to the setup process for this. I'm sorry, I jumped off the uh, the train of thought there for a second. So once you have the frame named, you give it a time zone, set the location, all that stuff, you will get to the main screen. So the main screen, if I click the little home button right here and point it over there, this is going to give me a few different options. The first one is device share. Now if you click this, the frame will generate a code and when you log in on the app on your phone, you enter that code and your phone will pair to the frame. Now the app, let's talk about that. It was not very easy to find. I had to go onto VUCA Frames website and uh, the app name, let me pull it up here. The app name is actually Whale Photo. Okay, so it has nothing to do with VUCA times, which I thought it would be. So Whale Photo is the name of the app. And this is what the app looks like. Okay, so you've got over here, you've got my connected frame. So once you connect the phone to the frame, the frame will appear here and you can adjust the settings on the phone instead of on the frame itself. You have settings for the app change your username, software update, yada yada. Then over here you have photos and you can access all of your phone photos on here. And all you have to do is select the ones you wanna to upload to the frame and then click next. And then uh, it will send them over to the frame. I have mine named living room. Pretty easy process to upload your photos to the frame. Then on the history, you can see which photos you've transferred over and which ones you still need to transfer over. It, you know, it's a pretty intuitive app and it worked pretty slickly. I didn't experience any bugs or hiccups on there, but, um, it, it was just kind of clunky to find. And so once I finally found it, I was like, whale photo, what, what the heck is whale photo? So anyway, let's take a look at that screen again. If I click the home button, I point it at the display, you've got device share, that's where you get your code. Gallery is where you can look at all of your photos uh, kind of in a tiled setting. You know, if you want to select one individually, you can do that. Then if I click home again, you've got the settings. That's going to give you the frame settings and there's a ton of them here. So my frame is where you see things like the name, the location, the time zone. Um, if you want to use 24 hour format, it also has a motion sensor. So what you can have this set is to turn off when no one's around. And then as soon as this little uh, sensor over here detects motion, the screen will light up and you don't have to waste, you know, the electricity, however small it may be, um, and have the display on constantly. So that's nice to see. Um, if we, 
back up again, we've got manage photos, and that's where you can see uh, how many photos you have, how much memory they take up. Now, one thing to know is this, I can't see a place for this to accept an external memory card, and it only has eight gigabytes of internal space. Now, I'm using really high quality photos, so I'm already using almost half the memory with 10 photos. Obviously that won't do for some people. If you shoot lower quality photos, then maybe you won't take up as much space. I don't know if they offer like an upgraded memory option, but you know, 10 photos, that's not gonna do a lot, right? You can also delete your photos in here and completely reset the frame if you want. Down on device share, that's where you get your number to connect your phone to the frame. I'm not gonna do it now because I don't want you all connecting to my frame, but that's where you would do it. Um, display and slideshow, this is where you can kind of set some settings like a timer for how long each set uh, photo is shown. You can turn on and off the caption on the photo. Um, hold on, let me point it out there. There we go. Uh, fill the frame, so if the, the photo doesn't fill the whole area, it will enlarge it if you like it to. You can uh, adjust the display order, the brightness, the notification volume if you send it a new picture and it um, uploads a new photo. Video playback is, like I said, this can play video files and there is a speaker on the back and you can set it to play once or repeat the same video. You can adjust the audio settings and the volume. So a lot of different, you know, customization in this menu. I'm gonna back up again. Hold on, let me point it back. Oh, I'm adjusting the volume there. Uh, so there's the back button right there. Click back up. Let me go back into settings there. Um, and then you've got your Wi-Fi settings, a help, and an about section. And this is very responsive, as you can see. You can get through these settings rather quickly. There's not much lag. Um, I'm gonna back up to the home screen again. Um, let's see, if we click home one more time, we've got hide photo. So let's say there's a photo you see and you're like, I don't want that in my slideshow anymore. You can hide it, fit to frame, and adjust. So a few quick settings right here in this home menu display. I'm gonna back up out of that again. Got to make sure to point it at the screen. It's not a radio frequency, it is infrared. I'm not quite sure what this top button does, but this one in the middle will take you to your gallery of photos. You need to push that down pretty hard. And then I'm gonna back up out of there. And then this button at the bottom will take you to your settings rather quickly. So a couple different um, you know, quick access buttons right there. Let me back that up. So all in all, this is a great little frame. It's compact. It's really easy to use despite not having a manual. The app, once I downloaded it, was pretty slick. Transferring photos to here uh, was rather quick. All right, so final thoughts on this VucaPlay V7. Uh, it's a great value. I mean, you're not gonna find the Wi-Fi photo transfer in a seven inch frame with good HD quality at this price point. You know, you're gonna have to pay at least over a hundred bucks. So that's really nice to see. The quality of the frame itself, the quality of the photos on the screen looks fantastic. Navigating it with the remote, uh, despite being a little bit clunky, is still really easy. It's very responsive. There's no lag in the programming. So I love all of that. Downsides to this frame, I think, would be the small memory, you know, eight gigabytes, not that much, especially if you're putting like high quality, high resolution photos on here. If you're just using phone snapshots and you don't shoot in too high of a resolution, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, I don't, you know, I wish you could hang it on a wall. Some people like to do that, uh, but you know, using the kickstand is not that big of a deal, but to have the option would have been nice. All in all, Fantastic deal. I've had other digital photo frames, you know, that you have to put a memory card in or use a flash drive. It's just clunky. No one likes to go between their computer and their photo frame. The more things we can do from our phones, the better. So this is gonna get thumbs up for me. If you wanna pick one up, I will include a link down in the description where you can go buy one and support the channel. And I would of course love you for it. Now, thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna become a subscriber, go ahead and click that button, leave a comment, share the video, like it. It helps the channel grow so I can keep bringing you awesome product reviews every week. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time.